Hey guys, so this is the first video where we're going to actually um, load up Lumion and begin to work between Rhino and Lumion to make sure that you can import your model appropriately and begin to set materials. So first, when you open up Lumion, I just want you to go to the create new um, model and then you can just choose a plain environment here. It just has a sky and grass. So Lumion is uh, fairly simple to work with. I'm holding down my um, right mouse button to uh, look around and orbit. Um, if you hold down your left mouse button and move around, nothing happens. Then of course you can zoom in and out. And uh, there's actually keyboard shortcuts for moving around the model. And these you're gonna just have to get used to. If you um, game, this will probably be a little bit easier for you. So pressing Q, will raise your camera. Pressing E will lower you back down to the ground like that. And you'll, you'll just hit the ground, you won't go below it. Um, pressing W will make you go forward in space and then hitting S will make you go backwards. And you can actually use modifiers to increase the speed at which this, um, these actions happen. So if you use shift Q, you're gonna go up really quickly. If you use shift spacebar Q, you're gonna go up at like hyperspeed. So um, if I press shift uh, space bar E, I'll just keep going down really fast. W, same thing, and S is moving back at hyperspeed. So um, if you wanna just kind of like take it slow, um, press W, go forward. You're always gonna go towards wherever your little target is here. S will take you back and then using shift plus one of those keys will make you go in whatever direction you've chosen, but really quickly. So you can always see what you're doing. There's like a little uh, tooltip guide over to the bottom right-hand side of the screen. You see, it'll tell you exactly what will happen if you press those keys. Um, all right, so that's kind of just like navigating around and orbiting in Lumion, but let's uh, get started with importing a model. So you see up here, there's kind of like this hidden um, toolbar, which is the layers palette. And I'm just going to um, click on this and call this my Rhino model. I usually like to name my models just to keep things organized and whatever, mo uh, whatever layer you're highlighted on is the one that things will get imported into. So if I made another one and called this planting or trees or something like that, then um, I would be on that layer. So I'll just go back to my Rhino model and you can see the eyeball means that it's on. That's pretty straightforward. Now we're just gonna hit this big green button that says import and you're going to navigate to wherever it is that your model is, your model export is living. Um, so before we do that, I'm gonna jump back into Rhino and I'm going to um, show you how to export your model. So I'm just gonna hit back to ghosted view. What you want to do is select a common base point that you're always going to import the model in. If you notice, there is a, a locked layer called point if you're in the Rhino model. And uh, this is right here. So that point is the, um, the base point that I have selected when I imported the model to Lumion. I suggest you just use it as well. So if you go down to your snaps, just turn off everything except point and then zoom back out. And basically what you wanna do is select everything in the model that you want to be imported into Lumion. So I'm just gonna select the whole thing and then I'll go to file export with origin right here. I'll click that and then I'm going to select the point. So because only point is highlighted in our object snaps, it is only going to grab the point that we have assigned. And now I'm going to save that into um, a project file. I usually make a folder within my CAD and 3D file for DAE, which is what this file needs to be exported as. So create a new folder called DAE like this. And then I'm going to change from Rhino7 to Colada.DAE. So change your file type to Colada. And then you can name it whatever it is you're naming it. I'm gonna call this one um, R6. And I will just hit save. So depending on how big the model is, um, it'll take a minute or so to save. And now it says file successfully saved and I'm gonna go back to Lumion, go back to my import panel here and navigate to where my project file is. So um, I'll go down into my CAD 3D, 
into my DAE file and then select the DAE that I just saved, which is the R6 version here. I'll hit open and it is going to bring up this import dialog box where you can name the model and you can select where you wanna put it. By default, it's gonna go into this category called main, but you can actually create new category folders. And you see that um, in my Lumion, I have a whole bunch of different folders. You won't have any of these in yours because these are all ones that I have created custom for myself. Um, so I would suggest that if you wanna keep your models in the main category, that's totally fine but you might also choose to create a category folder called imported 3D models or something like that. It's up to you. Um, I just keep mine in the default folder and then every other thing that I import, I put it into the appropriate folder. So if I'm importing different types of trees or plantings or furnishings, then I put those into those folders. For now, I'm just gonna leave it in main and hit okay. All right. so. Um, it depends on how big your model is, if it shows up right away, or if you actually have to select it from within your import model library. So this one has a little um, yellow warning that says, because this object is highly detailed, it may affect your editor performance. So um, you'll just click on it and then you'll be able to place it within your model. So now you can see the base point that you chose is the base point of the model. And I'm gonna just hit onto this little axis here Remember I told you you can't really snap anywhere to in Lumion? That's true, um, but what you can do is use this selection tool here. So if we just move over to the arrow over here, making sure that our imported models box is highlighted, you see that there's a little point. This is the base point of the model. So if we select that, then we can move this using these commands. So I'm just gonna move it up so that it's not intersecting with the ground plane. I'm just gonna move it up and it doesn't really matter how far it is because all of the surface materials were going to change anyways. And now I'm using Q to raise myself above the model and my um, right mouse button to orbit around and take a look and survey. So um, if we, again, if we use Q and go up, we're gonna go about this pace. If I use shift Q, we're gonna go faster. And if I use shift spacebar Q, we're gonna go at hyperspeed. Um, obviously I like to work at hyperspeed because Ain't nobody got time for orbiting. Um, I should also mention, if you want to pan left or right, A is a pan to the left and D is a pan to the right. So um, you can add that to your orientation checklist. So we're looking around and you see that basically all of these surfaces came in with the same type of material as what was dictated in Rhino. So if we have a green lawn material, here under the materials, that is what shows up in Lumion. It's really important that our material is set. So um, usually we'll set the color of something, but we forget to set the material. And there is a quick command. I believe it's new to Rhino 7. So if you're in Rhino 6, you won't be able to do this, uh, but you can synchronize your render colors. So let's say, um, we are going to change one of our surfaces to a different layer. I'm just gonna say this surface, I'm gonna put into the new type of material category here and go change object. Now it appears pink because the color is set to pink. And if we look at our layers, um, it is uh, set to display by color. Um, but if I want to make sure that its material is applied the same, then I can use the command synchronize render colors. That's a new command in Rhino 7. I hit enter, and then I'll select the objects that I want to synchronize. If you wanted to use all your layers and do go through the whole process, you could select that, but most of them should be already set. Just press enter, and it will now, um, if you go to your um, material application, you can see that that color is applied as a material. Now it doesn't show up as a material over here, but it is applied. And we can tell because uh, when we move off into Lumion, um, for example, I previously applied that pink material to this little space, it will come in as that. Why is this important? Because when we apply materials, and you can see the little paint bucket at the bottom here, it will select all of the elements that have the same material application. So if I want to give all of this a sand texture, it will grab all of the elements that have this orange 
material applied to them at once. So it's not by object or by surface, it's by layer of material. So make sure that in Rhino, all of the objects that you have created that are new have their own um, material layer set to them. So you can see that in my model, I have everything separated by what type of material it is rather than what type of object it is. So we have the ground, we have asphalt, we have concrete curbs, um, asphalt paths, a splash pad concrete, sand and mulch, etc. So try to get into the habit when you're when you know you're going to be rendering of working by material instead of by object. All right. So I'm going to um, export this and re-import it again and just show you how this material gets updated um, in Lumion. So I'm going to select everything, go back to export with origin, use my um, point object snap to grab it from the base point like this. I'm just going to save over the same file I had before like this with a Colada file, press save. I'll replace it. Now I can go into Lumion and we'll go back to the content library panel here and um, make sure the selection tool is on. And you can see that when the selection tool is on this little base point it shows up as a blue dot. You can just click on the base point and now we can use this arrow to reload the model. So if your model has this same name, um, for example, like I just resaved over the R6 version, I can use this and click on the arrow and Lumion is going to replace my model with the new version. So you don't have to worry about re-importing the model and placing it again. You can just re-import it um, and like update it like a link. So now you can see that area that I changed to the new material has been updated in Lumion as well. So if I wanted to apply a material, it would apply to both of those objects at the same time because they share the same material. So this is the first introduction to Lumion. This just shows you um, why we need to separate all our layers by um, different materials and also how to import models into Lumion. And in the next one, I'm going to give you a more detailed overview of the interface and explain what all of these panels mean.